everybody welcome back to the channel uh first off i just want to say thank you to all you guys for the likes for the comments for subscribing to the channel you guys have been showing my youtube channel so much love you guys encourage me you guys push me to keep going and rolling out these videos for you guys i really do hope that these videos are blessing you and you know helping you to walk stronger for the lord that's really the main reason i do it it's because i want to bless and encourage every single one of you guys so with that being said today guys um i'm gonna be reacting to a video about uh end time prophecy and i'm hoping that you really pay attention during this video because prophecy is very specific and um i'm hoping that a lot of you guys will be able to tie this video in with your uh biblical knowledge that you have already um this video is about 40 minutes long i'll probably do about half of it here and if this video gets good feedback, good shares, good comments, good likes, then I'll do a part two to this. I'm expecting this video to be dope. Like always, a lot of these videos that I watch are pretty dope. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for being amazing, being awesome. And I don't want to talk too long. This video's kind of long, so we're going to get right to it, guys. Hope you're having a blessed day, blessed night, wherever you are. And let's do this thing. Joel chapter 1 verse 7, God refers to the nation of Israel as his fig tree. For all intents and purposes, the fig tree was going to go dormant. And for 2,000 years, the Jews would be separated from their land. The fig tree would be dormant, but Jesus said there would be a generation that would see the signs of life on the fig tree slash Israel. And the generation that saw that would be the one that would not pass away. We call it God's major prophetic time clock. Israel has come back into world history as God said it would. Well, the end times technically is a reference to everything from the day of Pentecost uh, all the way to the return of Christ. So in one sense, we're already in the last days. Are we in the last of the last days? That's the big question. But when the United States stands with Israel, the chances of peace really rise and rises exponentially. That's what will happen when Donald Trump is president of the United States. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. And we will send a clear signal that there is no daylight between America and our most reliable ally, the State of Israel. Today is Donald Trump's first full day as the 45th President of the United States. But it was not all a celebration. More than 200 anti-Trump demonstrators were arrested during a day of protest in Washington. Some set fires or threw bricks into windows of businesses. The time for empty talk is over. Now arrives the hour of action. My announcement today marks the beginning of a new approach to conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. That it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. This is a long overdue step to advance the peace process and to work towards a lasting agreement. This is a historic day. Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. It's been the capital of Israel for nearly 70 years. It was here that our temple stood, our kings ruled, our prophets preached. Jerusalem has been the focus of our hopes, our dreams, our prayers for three millennia. <clears throat> From every corner of the earth, our people yearn to return to Jerusalem. This decision reflects the president's commitment 
to an ancient but enduring truth, to fulfilling his promises, and to advancing peace. The President's decision is an important step towards peace, for there is no peace that doesn't include Jerusalem. Remember, guys, the capital peace is of very important to end time prophecy. The Bible says there will be peace for seven years, and in the middle of that, the Antichrist is going to break it. So, peace in Israel is such a big thing for us to be looking at. We should always be looking at Israel when we're considering prophecy because that is that's focused in the end times. Is Israel. So, I just wanted to add that for any of you guys who are a little unclear about that. Israel is God's chosen people. Through Israel came the gospel to us, anybody who's not Jewish. Remember, they don't believe in Jesus. They believe that their Savior is still coming. We know it's Jesus. They don't know it's Jesus. Is there a messiah? In Judaism? In Judaism. Jews invented the Messiah. But it's not the same Messiah that most people think about. Okay. Because right? when Christians think of the Messiah, they think of someone who's divine. Yeah. They think of, you know, the end of days. What we have for the Messiah is a man, a king of this earth, who's going to bring peace among the nations in this world. And he will not be divine. He will not be divine. Is a man king of this earth who's going to wow. bring peace among the wow. nations in this world. According to Jewish tradition, he has three things he's supposed to do. Number one, he's going to reconstitute the Jewish kingdom or the Jewish state. Number two, he's going to bring peace with the neighbors. And number three, he's going to rebuild that rebuild temple. The temple. Here we are. This is 2015. What are you going to do now? What is contemporary Jewish position on the temple. The Jews think of the world in terms of this dream that once so existed in the right world that so was important. taken away. The Jews want to bring back into the world. That is the reconstruction of the temple. The reconstruction of the temple as the, the, the crowning symbol of this era of justice and peace that we're supposed to be as assisting to bring back into the world. That's crazy. They believe he's going to be a man. And our Bible says there's going to be a man who comes to set peace. That's the Antichrist. They don't know it, though. Whew. Once that temple is rebuilt, it's going to be Daniel 927, in the midst of the week, that seven year period of time between seven the years. rapture and the second coming of Christ, there has to be a temple there. Jesus confirmed that, Matthew 24, 15, when you see the abomination of desolation. Apostle Paul confirmed it, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, Antichrist walks into the temple, the abomination of desolation takes place. And in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1, John is told to measure the space for the temple. So we have four proof texts, there will be a temple on the Temple Mount. At that point, in when the Antichrist the appears in the beginning of that seven year tribulation period, he confirms a peace agreement. The Jewish people lay down their weapons. They think they're at peace. They think the Messiah has come. There's a coalition of nations coming in to the area of Israel to wipe them off the face of the earth. Well, Jesus Christ intercedes. And in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 45, it says that the Antichrist, after the Lord has given the victory to the Jewish people, the Antichrist usurps that victory and tells the Jewish people to put their temple up on the holy mountain of God there in the city of Jerusalem. At that point, they build a temple. The temple is built. It has to be up before the midway point of the tribulation, yep. and it's going to be standing there. They restore the temple sacrifices and everything else. Everything has been prepared. They have the utensils. They have the men who've studied the priestly duties. I met recently when I was in Israel with the man who was the 
chairman of the Sanhedrin, the 70 wise Jewish scholars that operate the temple. He said he has his garment hanging in his closet, in his home, ready to put on and report to the Temple Mount. So all the preparations have been made. They are ready. Which, you know, they still sacrifice animals, so we've that's got very here is weird this for us today. new Sanhedrin and the dedication of the third temple altar, which is unbelievable to see. We thought this was fake news, friends. We didn't realize this was even real news. Right. We thought it was one of those weird articles on the internet, but it turns out 10.30 a.m. this morning in, in Jerusalem, we actually have a dedication a ritual for the altar, sacrificial altar of the third temple, the day after Hanukkah, the feast of dedication. We have Look this that, dedication ceremony by the new Sanhedrin. Building the third temple, uh, everybody, then everybody will prosper because this is what the temple is for, <laughs> for the whole world. So you think that there could be some union between all the religions as Absolutely. part of Absolutely. We already have union, unity, but everybody's afraid from the terrorists. So this is our job to unify everybody to worship the only true living God uh, in the third temple with all the nations, all the nations that will worship God. You think we're in the time it's almost here, the third temple? Yes, absolutely. Uh, many, many um, Muslims, I'm talking about the high, um, uh, let's say, uh, rank or hierarchy in the Muslim uh, religions came to us and asked us, please build a temple. Why? What? Because the temple is for everybody, is for the whole nations to prosper and thrive. So they came to us oh. and asked, please build the temple. Now, the problem is with the radicals. The new world um, without any, let's say, mm. negative and forbidden feelings, like hatred, like uh, revenge, like it will be only loving, appreciation, uh, honoring, so this will be a, a new world, but not all order. It will be a new world, uh, holistic, uh, the holistic way, the, the way God wants it. Hardline religious group Matei Irgune Hamigdash, or headquarters of the temple organizations, has a mission to rebuild a Jewish house of worship on Jerusalem's Temple Mount. The Jewish group, however, maintains that the location is key for fulfilling biblical prophecies. It is yeah. a new start of the redemption. And we hope that next year or even before, we'll be, we will be on the Temple Mount. The law will come from here. All the 70 nations, they will have a seat in the court and the law will be the law of the Bible. Under the watch of high security, the sheep is brought to a secluded area. We're on a, another milestone in the process of the return of the Jewish people to their homeland. Young men playing the role of priests dress in biblical looking clothes. It's now time to begin. Everyone gathers to pray as the priests reenact ancient traditions from the Bible. The event that takes place here is not an event in itself. It's a practice. It's a training. And uh, people are coming in to learn, this, to understand. Out of the eye of the public, the sheep ready. is slaughtered. Its blood is brought out for ritual use. And maybe this year, in four days later, the representative of the groups of the Israelites will come with their lamp wow. to the yards of their temple. We built a kosher altar and start all the ritual of uh, Pesach lamp. Pesach will be the judge. The, Mashi the, the Mashiach will be the judge and not for what he sees and not for he hears, but what he smells. You believe the Mashiach Ben David is, is coming he's, he, to, to this ben temple? Mashiach Ben David is very soon and he is a Jew and it is, he is not Jesus and uh, if the Christians want to hold it, they can hold it. But we will never change our mind. We prefer to go back to Auschwitz and not to change our religion.
This is the main thing. We are I mean, loyal. Me do more prophecy videos. One of the very so first things when Trump right was now. elected, the uh, the rabbis in Israel calling on him and Putin to use their international clout to do what? To rebuild the temple. Don't think this can't happen. I think impetus is on our side right now. I think we're moving towards mm -hmm. a moment. And the rabbis over there, That's some of good. what the mystical rabbis are saying is very, very curious right now. This one, Trump upset victory divinely sent to begin messianic pro uh, process, say Israeli rabbis, mm -hmm. right? There have been at least a dozen Jewish rabbis that have said the Messiah is on earth now. He's been identified. He is soon going to make himself known. Well, some, some key things have to happen for the messianic figure in Jewish, in the Jewish mindset, for the Messiah to arrive. You can't think of him that like temple. we think of Messiah. We think of Messiah after the model of Jesus. He's the son of God, divine birth, all of that. That's not the way the Jews look at the Messiah. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a political leader. As a matter of fact, Messiah to them means the anointed one. And it goes back to the ancient days when they would anoint a king and recognize him as this is the man that God sent. And what they're looking for is several things. First of all, they're looking for uh, somebody in, in a political figure who can lead decisive battles in defense of Israel. This is why the only po politician on the face of the earth that was standing up and saying, if I'm elected president, I'm going to be the biggest friend that Israel's ever had. Yeah, yeah. We're going to undo the Iran deal. Well, blah, blah, no, blah, blah right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And being a friend that. of Benjamin Netanyahu. Secondly, they're looking for when the Messiah comes, uh, there will be an ingathering of Jews from around the world back into the Holy Land. That That's why the rabbis on the before. eve of his election went on television and said we need to call now Jews from around the world come back to Jerusalem because the wow. Messiah is here right a growing number of Jews are returning to Israel it's part of a fulfillment of prophecy spoken in the Bible earlier this year immigrants from North America landed at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport to make Israel their home Seeing Jewish people return to Israel is literally watching Bible prophecy unfold. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel all speak of the Jewish return to the land. Since 2014, there's been a 79% increase of inquiries about assistance to return to Israel. In the early morning, 130 Ukrainian Jews landed in Tel Aviv to begin a new life. Many see the moment when these new immigrants step onto the tarmac here at Ben Gurion Airport as the time when the words of the Bible written thousands of years ago come to life. There has never been a people who have been exiled for so long who then return to their homeland, return to their language. And so there's the prophetic reality of this that's so huge that each one of these people Isaiah saw, Jeremiah saw, they saw them, they saw this happening, and now we are here to witness it. We are here to be part of it. Uh, uh, there, there's another thing. Thirdly, they talk about when he arrives, he is going to reinstitute the temple service. So what was the second thing they did? They called on Trump and Putin to use their power to rebuild the temple wow. and to reinstitute the temple service. I'm not saying that they think he is the Messiah. What I actually think is that most of the rabbis there think he's John the Baptist and the Messiah is about to appear. He's the forerunner. He's the guy that's going to start the message in the wilderness and the Messiah is going to come in on his heels. And so we need the temple service. We need to get back into Israel, the Messiah. Now, why are they saying that? They have identified somebody. I mean, I there could be a few rabbis there that think he's the Messiah. The other third key is he has to be of the Davidic dynasty. He has to be of the Davidic bloodline. And there is an effort right now to go back through the European monarchy, cousins of uh, President Donald Trump, to show that his bloodline goes back to the Davidic dynasty. Now, why are these uh, efforts underway? I'm just saying there's something very strange here that's going on, and everything I'm saying can be verified. Multiple news agencies, the Jerusalem Post, Breaking Israel News, they're all talking about this right now. So they, too, believe that we are in the end times. They, too, believe that the Messiah wow. is about to appear. We would say the second coming is about to happen, but their Messiah is going to be a false Messiah. He's going to be the Antichrist, right?
I hope a lot of you guys are catching on to this video and understand what's going on. And if you don't, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. This is crazy. Before the 2016 presidential election, some evangelical Christians began comparing Donald Trump to King Cyrus, the biblical king who's credited with allowing Jews to return to Jerusalem from exile in the Babylonian Empire. The idea behind the comparison is that a non-believing leader can be used by God to enact policies that help advance the interest of believers, in this case, Christians and Jews. Let's talk a little bit more about the King Cyrus comparison, comparison because it's not just a small segment of evangelical Christians who are making this comparison. Prime Minister Netanyahu actually did the same thing what? recently. And in honoring Trump for declaring Jerusalem Israel's capital, Netanyahu likened him to Harry Truman, Lord Balfour, and Cyrus wow. the Great. What do you make of all of this? You know, those of us lucky enough to visit Jerusalem know that we don't count in decades, we don't count in centuries, we count in millennia. You're swimming in history. And so when you see someone do something good for the Jewish people, you put them in historical context. And Harry Truman, after he recognized the state of Israel within 11 minutes of its founding in 1948, was thanked. And he said, I am Cyrus, because he was going back to the Persian uh -huh. king. And so it's not surprising that we would look at Donald Trump, say he did something good for the Jewish people, he did something good for the American people, he did something good for the world, and say, you're part of that historical chain. Okay, guys, that's 20 minutes right there, guys. Um, I really wanna finish this video. I really hope you guys understand what's going on. I hope you guys already have a feel for prophecy and what we should be looking out for. And if you don't, I would love to do more of these to help you guys understand prophecy and where we're at and what we should be looking for. But this video just helps to show anybody watching this how close Jesus coming back really is. How close the Antichrist coming is really is. And um, the key thing, I know I spoke here and there throughout the video, but the key thing is to always be looking at Israel and seeing where they are. Because where they are, what they believe, and what's happening to them is just a huge symbol to us. It's just significant to us as far as biblical prophecy from the New Testament that they don't have. So guys, video's kind of long. If you guys want me to finish up this video, let me know. If this video bless you, let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, man. And I'll see you on the next video. Love you guys.